Kim Cattrall is one of the most beloved stars in Sex and the City. Most people don't know that her time on the show took a heavy toll on the actress's personal life. In fact, Kim confessed her time as Samantha Jones was the reason her third marriage crumbled and why she didn't have children. With three failed marriages behind her, it seems as though Cottrell has finally found love, and he ticks every box she could have ever dreamed of. Stay tuned while we dive into Kim's love life, why her marriage has never worked out, and how she's finally found the man of her dreams. I support you, and honey, these bitches need to be put in their places. Kim Cottrell is happier than ever when it comes to her relationship with Russell Thomas over the last six years. I mean, we have gotten to know each other intimately. Um, mm -hmm. We keep coming back and we love each other. The 66-year-old actress gushed over her 52-year-old boyfriend Russell in a way that would have left Samantha Jones rolling her eyes. The couple has been fairly private about their relationship over their last six years together. Kim hasn't been seriously linked to anyone since her last marriage to Mark Levinson came to an end in 2004. However, after three failed marriages, Cottrell confessed that Thomas was worth waiting for. Kim and Russell first met in 2016 while he was working at the BBC. The actress, who was born in Liverpool, immediately fell at ease around Russell, who was from Kent, England, and the pair bonded through their shared UK ties. After that, Russell followed Kim on Twitter and contacted her through a direct message. Kim shared, it's just so easy. I'm very comfortable around him. Adding that when they were first introduced to one another, they both acted on gut instinct. Soon, the actress invited Russell to her house in Canada. The pair soon realized that they had a special spark. After only hanging out a few times and sharing a few intimate meals together, Kim suggested that Russell make a move to Canada so that they didn't have to be so far from each other. I need to go away for a while, and I need to go home, and two of my homes are Canada, of course, primarily. Russell eagerly agreed. Cottrell shared, He came and we got along great, and we've been together ever since. Describing her new beau as a firecracker with a wicked sense of humor, adding, He's easy on the eyes. While the couple has remained private about the details of their relationship, Kim doesn't hold back on social media. The actress often shares sweet photos of the two living their most loved up life and exuding utter happiness. She gushed, I love him. When it comes to their 14 year age gap, Cottrell couldn't be less phased about it when she was asked if she saw a problem that her characters were often involved with younger men. She responded, no, not at all. He's so gorgeous and adorable. At a certain age, people merge, don't they? She said. Cottrell also added that she doesn't think in those terms anymore. She explained, Maybe I've lived longer and done more things, but I don't see a difference. Since their move to Canada, it seems as if the relationship continues to go from strength to strength, even taking pride in little things like morning routines. Kim and Russell keep things simple by starting their day in a very English way, with a cup of tea together in the morning. It's pretty clear that there's nothing that they enjoy more than their quality and intimate time together. The actress still has a place in New York, but she prefers to stay at her home in Vancouver. Her mother lives there, so she also wanted to be close in case something happened. If there's one thing that we know for sure, Kim hasn't had an easy road to finding a stable and happy relationship. Your relationship starts to change, and then it starts, you start to ask questions, who am I? You know, what do I want at this time in my life where I still have a lot of energy, where I'm still vital and hot and hot? While her career boomed following the success of Sex and the City, the actress admitted that her time on the show resulted in the failure of her third marriage to Mark Levinson. Kim was first married to Canadian writer Larry Davis from 1977 to 1979. Rather than get a divorce, the actress chose for the marriage to be annulled instead. She later married German architect Andre J. Lyson in 1982, but they eventually divorced seven years later. Speaking of her time on Sex and the City, the actress described it as a fun and unforgettable experience. However, her work as an actor and intense schedule soon took a serious toll on her personal life, including her marriage to Mark. She confessed, It cost me my marriage, but I was never home. Kim explained that she was never there and Mark quickly became lonely and upset and competitive. She added, It was really difficult. It was really hard. The actress was spending more time on set with her co-stars than she was with her real family, and it didn't take long for Mark to start resenting her. On the other hand, Cottrell felt like she didn't have much of a choice when it came to her work. I wanted to really use my work as an actor, as an actress, to really kind of open up and understand more of what's going on for me as a woman. She explained that she was working 18 to 19 hour days consistently, and the exhaustion that followed meant that she had no time in her life for anything else. 
Sadly, her intense work schedule and lack of time at home with her husband reached a breaking point. Kim and Mark divorced in 2004, leaving the actress single and alone once again. Cottrell experienced her third divorce at the same time the Sex and the City series came to an end. I took that as an opportunity to think to myself, wow, I'll be free to do something else. Around that time, Cottrell's father got diagnosed with dementia, further worsening an already nightmare of a year. The actress also opened up about her battle with chronic insomnia. Kim described the sleep disorder as a tsunami that quickly became an all-consuming problem in her life. For a long time, the actress enjoyed her time as a single woman and didn't spend much time dating. Following her third divorce, the actress had a string of failed relationships with A-listers like Pierre Trudeau, the former Canadian Prime Minister, actor Daniel Benzali, and musician Gerald Casali. She also enjoyed a surprising romance with chef Alan Weiss, who was 22 years her junior. The couple dated for four years before their eventual split. Cottrell has no kids from any of her previous relationships. The actress opened up about her decision to postpone any plans of having children in an interview, explaining that she considered having kids during her third marriage. However, by then she was already in her early 40s, and getting pregnant would mean she would have to go through several cycles of IVF treatments. Despite not having kids, the icon found an avenue to explore her maternal side by mentoring young actresses. She admitted that being able to give guidance to fellow actors has given her all the fulfillment she needed. Since the actress has been dating Russell, having children is still not part of her plan. The couple is perfectly content with each other, and it seems they have no plans to add another family member. And Kim doesn't have a problem with that. She explained, I have a place to be a mom here. Not a biological mom, but a mom and an auntie and a friend. After everything that Kim has had to go through in her life, we are so glad to see her happy and in love. While it's unfortunate that her marriage never worked, it seems like it was all for the best. There's no doubt that the actress had a tough time finding the right man who'd understand her and give her everything that she needs. But it seems like Russell Thomas couldn't be more perfect. We only wish the best for Kim and Russell, and we can't wait to see where their love takes them in the future. When Dame Judi Dench's husband, Michael Williams, tragically died of cancer in 2001, Walk became her rock. He was wonderful. He was very, very jokey. Her acting was something she drowned herself in, a bid to keep her mind busy and distract her from her grief. For almost 10 years, the dame confessed she never thought dating or romance would be on the cards after losing the love of her life. But in 2010, that all changed after Judy met a man by the name of David Mills. He's a dairy farmer turned conservationist, and despite their vast difference in careers, the pair had an instant spark. Mills had invited Dench, who is known for her work in conservation and environmentalism, to his center. David shared, I invited her to come and have supper one night, and then she asked me to one of her things. Judy and David felt so connected to one another that they've been together ever since. However, the legendary actress doesn't like to call Mills her boyfriend or partner. She shared, I have a jolly nice friend now. I don't know what the word is because I don't like the word partner. She added, partner is something to do with dancing. Partner, horrible word. Friend, no. Boyfriend, no. Chap, will chap do? The actress shared that during one hot summer night, she and David went swimming and shared a glass of champagne. During their evening together, she said to him, this is so fantastic. She and Mills enjoy the simplicity of their time together. And most importantly, they make each other laugh. She said, I love having a good laugh. A sense of humor is the most attractive thing of all. It's essential. Dame Judy also expressed that just because she's in her late 80s doesn't mean she lacks the desire for romantic intimacy. She said, Well, of course, you still feel desire. Does that ever go? When it comes to marriage, however, Judy and David briefly considered it, but decided they didn't need a marriage certificate to prove their commitment to one another. She admitted, He's not going to propose. No, 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 no. Let's all just pull ourselves together and be our age. What's more is that the pair don't live together. Instead, Dench lives with her 50-year-old daughter, Finty Williams, and her grandson, Sam Williams. However, she and Mills pretty much live next door to one another. As she explained, David and I, we are much too independent, and he is very busy. He has a business to run. But regardless of whether they live together or not, Dench is left feeling very content. At the beginning of their time together, she confessed that she wasn't even prepared or ready for it. The actress explained that their relationship was very gradual and growing up. Judy added, We got together, in a way, through the animals. 
It's just wonderful. There's nothing more inspiring than Judy finding love again, especially after losing the love of her life all those years ago. She and her late husband, Michael Williams, met through their work as actors. From a young age, Dench knew the stage was where she wanted to be. After high school, she went on to study at the Central School of Speech and Drama. At 23 years old, she finally hit the theatre jackpot after making a name for herself in the realm of Shakespeare in the late 1950s. By the 60s, Dench was starring in films, and so was Williams. The pair had shared the screen on multiple occasions, as well as both being promising young stars in the Royal Shakespeare Company. But it wasn't until a decade later that they fell in love and began a relationship. When Judy left for a six-week tour of Australia, Michael followed and proposed to her. After he popped the big question, Dench simply responded, Ask me on a rainy night in Battersea, and I'll think about it. After giving the wedding proposal another go and meeting Judy's expectations, the couple married in 1971. And what was the foundation of the relationship? Because I'm always curious about successful marriages. I tell, Louis. Sense of humour, mm. probably mostly. Michael used to laugh, and, and when he laughed, he used to cry. The following year, they welcomed their only child, daughter Finty Williams. After Finty was born, Judy thought this would be the best time for her to slow down on her busy work as an actress so she could focus on raising their daughter. However, Williams encouraged her not to give up on her career. She admitted, I wanted to give it up because I wanted to be a proper mother and be around. And Michael said, no, please don't do that. Dench explained that it wasn't just the future of her career that Williams was concerned about, but also the fact they were in need of a stable income and were able to give their daughter everything that she needed. Thankfully, both actors would soon be in for some good fortune because their respective careers as actors were about to skyrocket. Not much longer after the birth of their daughter, Judy's career progressed at an incredible rate. Her role in the 1995 James Bond Goldeneye film as Agent M was an unforgettable moment in her career. She subsequently played two British queens, won an Academy Award, a Tony, four television BAFTA awards, two Golden Globe awards, and two Screen Actors Guild awards. Sadly, in 2001, tragedy struck when her husband died from lung cancer at just 65 years old. When Williams died, Dench decided to still go full steam ahead with her work. But this time, it wasn't about money, but rather about keeping herself distracted from her overwhelming grief. The day after his funeral, Dench went to Canada to film The Shipping News. Then, the day after she got home, she started filming Iris. She confessed, It's all a bit of a haze to me. It wasn't the best time. Are you okay talking about how it came to an end, how he came to die? I don't want to b mention it. Well, he, 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 he wasn't well, and, and um, I'm not good at it, actually. Years later, Dench said she still feels William's presence around her and their daughter. She explained that her late husband's presence was still very much in their home, and it brought her a lot of comfort. Speaking about the grief she experienced, Judy said, I suspect I shall never ever get over Mikey. It changes who you are altogether, I think. Because it's like you're walking along and suddenly you're not looking and there's an enormous chasm in front of you. In an unexplainable incident, the actress described a moment when she had spoken out loud to Michael in their home and went upstairs. The curtain in her bathroom has flicked open in some way, so she straightened it. Although he passed away many years ago now, Judy said it never gets any easier. She explained that unexpected kinds of things happen. Sometimes she'll be walking somewhere and see a photograph of Michael or something that reminds her of him, and she'll feel an overwhelming sense of sadness. She added, I don't expect you ever get used to it. Two decades after the loss of her husband, Dench admitted that there was still a lot of pain and grief attached to William's death. For years, the actress never considered marrying again, let alone finding another romantic interest. Then, the most unexpected thing happened. David Mills came into her life and changed everything. Judy finally felt like she had met the right person that she could give her heart to once again, even after it had been so terribly broken. While most people in their 80s would be deep into their retirement years at this point in life, Judy is still full steam ahead with her career, speaking openly about balancing her work life with health struggles and why they won't hold her back. Judy's deteriorating eyesight has been a battle for the star in later life, but the actor, like with most things in her life, met the challenge with grace and courage. She added, In my mind's eye, I'm six foot and willowy and about 39. F*** being 86 years old. 
Given the legacy Dench has, it makes sense why so many in Britain consider her to be a national treasure. But hilariously, she hates the term. She said, It sounds pretty dusty to me. I don't like it at all. I wish there was another word for it. A working, job actor is better. There's no doubt that losing a spouse is indescribably heartbreaking. Judy married the love of her life and never expected that she would ever find someone to love again after his death. However, meeting the right man made all the difference, and her relationship with David helped heal her heart from the years of grief she had suffered. We're so happy for Dame Judy, and her story of finding love after loss is one that we will never forget. We wish Judy and David all the best for their future together. Following the tragic passing of the beloved actress Olivia Newton-John, fans have been looking back on her memorable life. While her husband John Easterling has been by her side for the last 14 years, Olivia had two previous relationships that impacted her life. We're going to take a look at the late actress's love life, her marriages, and the mysterious disappearance of a man she once loved. Olivia Newton-John was 31 years old when she first met 20-year-old dancer Matt Latanzi on the set of the 1980 musical film Zanadu. There isn't much known about the beginnings of their relationship, but we do know that the pair instantly hit things off. Olivia and Matt married in 1984 and welcomed their daughter Chloe Rose two years later. Sadly, in 1992 the couple was struck with the terrible news of Newton-John's first breast cancer diagnosis. I was mad because if anyone doesn't deserve to go through cancer, it's my mom. The actress was determined to fight, and Matt was there by her side while she underwent treatment. Olivia's family shared that he was so supportive of her throughout her battle. Unfortunately, three years later, the couple announced that they would be getting a divorce. Friends close to the former couple explained that the split was due largely because of the difference in their personal beliefs. When you're given a cancer diagnosis or a scary illness diagnosis, you're suddenly given a possibility of a time limit. The truth is, you get hit by a truck tomorrow, you know, you don't know. So every day is a gift. However, it was later revealed that Matt had been having a secret affair with their babysitter, Sydney Jessup, while Olivia was battling cancer. When Newton John began to have suspicions about the relationship between her husband and their babysitter, she reportedly confronted the pair, which quickly turned into an argument. The fight resulted in Matt moving in with Jessup and eventually divorcing Olivia. He then went on to marry his former babysitter in 1997. Thankfully, Olivia and Matt were able to remain amicable following their divorce for the sake of their daughter, and there was no bad blood between them. She never blamed her ex-husband's affair for the end of their marriage, but insisted that it was her battle with cancer that led to their divorce. A year after her divorce, the actress started dating cameraman Patrick McDermott. The pair had an on and off relationship over the next nine years. But during that time, there wasn't information about their romance since they tried to keep things out of the spotlight. However, that all changed in 2005 after Patrick mysteriously disappeared while on a fishing trip. Olivia and Patrick had ended their relationship the year before, so they were no longer together when he went missing. But McDermott's disappearance drew a lot of attention because of his previous romance with the actress. What's more, the circumstances around Patrick's sudden disappearance made things all the more confusing. It was only 10 days later that his ex-wife, actress Yvette Nepar, knew something was wrong when he never arrived for a scheduled visitation with his son. According to reports, no one had seen or heard from McDermott since the fishing trip, so he was officially reported as a missing person. It was determined by the US Coast Guard that McDermott most likely drowned after accidentally falling overboard. However, there were no witnesses on the boat that saw him fall into the water. His belongings were also all found on board the vessel, including his wallet, and his clothes had all been neatly folded. After further investigation into his disappearance, some were led to believe that he might have faked his own death. It turned out that Patrick was in serious debt, including owing his ex-wife $8,000 in unpaid child support. What resulted was a suspicion that he staged his own death in order to free himself of his financial troubles. So the question remained. Did he tragically fall overboard, or did he make himself disappear? Four years after his disappearance, Newton John confessed to still being haunted by the trauma of losing him. I think there will always be a question mark. I don't think I will ever really be at peace with that. In a shocking turn of events in 2016, it was reported that there was evidence that McDermott was alive after photos were discovered of a man matching his description. A private detective shared that these images were a 90% match to McDermott, adding, I believe it is him. You go through, whenever you go through difficult times, there's always those concerns, but you know, I, I, I live on. 
And uh, of course, questions come up always. That's human. A source later revealed that Olivia had allegedly hired private investigators to help search for Patrick and, during that time, also bonded with his ex-wife over his disappearance. The source shared, She came to learn Patrick staged his disappearance, but she never went looking for him. As she pieced it all together, she uncovered why he decided to just pack up and leave. The insider also explained that while it was difficult for Olivia to come to terms with the fact that Patrick had chosen to leave his family behind in the most sensational of ways, she understood that it was what he wanted, so she stopped looking for him. Unfortunately, Patrick's disappearance remains a mystery since neither his drowning nor the faking of his death can be made for certain. However, his ex-wife Yvette has shared that she believes McDermott fell overboard and has tried to move on with the tragedy of his loss. In the meantime, Olivia also moved on with her life and put the loss of her former lover behind her. The actress and John E. Sterling had been friends for almost 20 years after meeting at an environmental show around the 80s. However, a surprising incident occurred in 2006 that turned their friendship into a blossoming romance. E. Sterling got into a car accident while driving to the airport, which resulted in him fracturing his lower spine. Jean refused to stay at the hospital and instead called his friend Olivia and asked if he could recover at her guest house. However, E. Sterling admitted to her that he'd never seen her perform or even watched Grease. So, about a year later, E. Sterling finally made it to one of Olivia's performances in Miami. John then suggested that Olivia take a trip with him to the Amazon to meet other healers who work there. Newton John immediately agreed to take the trip with him, and it was at that moment that he knew she was the one. The South American voyage created the perfect chance for the pair to bond over their love for the jungle and the healing powers of nature. Newton John and the entrepreneur found a mutual bond in their appreciation of wellness culture and alternative healing methods. Easterling explained, We'd see each other every year at functions, and the more I got to know her, I thought, oh, she's a really nice person. She really does care about people and animals and the rainforest. The couple went on to get married in 2008 in a private Peruvian ceremony. Newton John later revealed in an interview, It was just a special sacred site that we went to. We walked there. It was a beautiful day and it was just something we wanted to do. She also gushed over her new husband during the interview, describing herself as very lucky. Olivia explained, I have a wonderful, beautiful husband who is just so loving and fantastic. She added, I always tell my friends you're never too old to find love. I found the love of my life at 59 going on 60. I'm grateful. It was the ultimate fairy tale ending and marked a bright new chapter following a challenging period in Newton John's personal life. Sadly, just five years later, Olivia's cancer returned, and after going into remission for a while, it came back once again in 2017. As the years passed, the actress continued to fight her battle against cancer, and John was by her side every step of the way. Tragically, on the 8th of August 2022, with John at her bedside, Olivia passed away in her home at the age of 73. John announced the heartbreaking news of his wife's passing on Facebook, sharing, Dame Olivia Newton-John passed away peacefully at her ranch in Southern California this morning, surrounded by family and friends. He also wrote a message celebrating Olivia's life and the special love that they shared. John added, Olivia has been a symbol of triumphs and hope for over 30 years, sharing her journey with breast cancer. Her healing inspiration and pioneering experience with plant medicine continues with the Olivia Newton-John Foundation Fund, dedicated to researching plant medicine and cancer. There's no doubt that the late Olivia Newton-John made an impact, not only in Hollywood, but in the approach to holistic medicine. After her first marriage ended, she yearned to find her equal, and she finally did with John Easterling. Together, they shared the same dream of healing people and changing the world. Her memory will forever live through the lives that she changed and everything she gave of herself to helping people. Olivia will never be forgotten by her fans and all those who love her. We share our deepest condolences to John and her family, and we hope that they're able to take this time to heal their hearts and find comfort in their memories of Olivia.